and welcome to Bricolage with Pink Girly. I'm Pink Girly, also known as Lori. That is a beautiful day here on the East Coast. It's been rather gray the last couple of days, but right now the sun is out and it's quite lovely. Ah, I feel a bit tired. I slept well, but I don't know. I don't think my coffee's kicking in. Good morning, Gail. How you doing today, Gail? How you feeling? I hope it's a good day for you. I was going to just show my fussing around with my tatting. Look, I got my threads. Look how skinny. Good morning, Candy. How you doing? Look how little that thread is. You're hanging in there. Oh, goodness. Look at this mess. I've watched a lot of videos. I'm getting confused with when you have to reverse your work. But see, I have issues. I am I am a little dyslexic with certain things. Numbers is one thing I'm dyslexic with. Look, I've got that all knotted up. I'm just going to have to snip that. Let's just do a little snip snip. Dawn, I was hoping you were going to be here doing the crafty vis visage. Is that how you say that, visage? Hi, Pam. Pam, your grandson is adorable. Adorable. All right, so I thought I was going to have a problem because I ordered this. You know, I got still attached to the ball. On tatting. I've been tatting. Do you tat? Do you tat, Dawn? Oh, please tell me you tat. See, I, I've been listening to this. Um... Hey, Kathy, good morning. I've been listening to Rusticate on YouTube. And um, I thought on one of hers, she said, if you're doing a circle, it would be to the left. And if you're doing a chain, oh, maybe I have it reversed. I end up doing my chains opposite, and then they're always going the wrong way. <gasps> you do oh, Dawn, can we get together? See, I, I usually get this going the wrong way. I have a real fine. I should have pulled that out of the trash. I have a real fine one. Anyway, this lady from McCary, I spied this um, lot of thread. And I mean, I was tracking it like a hawk because I was so anxious for it to come. Because all I had, which was fine, is this was this. And this is probably a number... I'm going to say a number five for man, probably maybe a number eight thread. And so I found a lot of um, thread you can use for tatting. And I'm watching it like a hawk. And it was supposed to show up. Oh, Kathy, when was that? Friday? I think it was supposed to show up Friday. I was so excited for it to come. And I opened up the box and there was a plastic horse, a dog bone, a Kong, all this other stuff. So I thought the lady had. Um, switched labels on the box right yeah i have a couple books too uh yeah friday okay and then um i was so happy because my husband was going out and my pack I had two packages coming and my packages were going to arrive and he wasn't going to be home it's very traumatic for him when packages arrive so I thought, oh, yeah, dodged a bullet there. And I'm like laughing, saying to Kathy, woohoo, he's going out. My packages are coming. Well, sure enough, I got the wrong package. And when he comes home, he walks in the door and throws another package in my lap. Can you believe it? Oh, my gosh. And it was my thread. So she, I contacted her and apparently she, she's got a little bit of a stressful life happening and she had two customers with the same first name and she printed my label out twice so we're, we're going to rectify that but look at this look at this I mean if you're not into crocheting or tatting this doesn't mean anything to you but look look at all this wonderful thread 
so I've been fussing around and some of it is like um like this is a number 80. So like you could you could sew a button on with this baby. You know? It was close to becoming a lost art. I mean, I love the way it looks. And of course, I've got handkerchiefs that have the edging, you know, vintage handkerchiefs that have the edging. So I'm trying to teach myself. Of course, I watched a couple of Murray's things, but I I said to Kathy, I would be so much better if I could just sit down, I think, and watch somebody. And I need to just lock it into my head which direction I need to be going when I do my arches. And then I said to Kathy, I did this one. This was a bigger needle and bigger thread. You can see this one from outer space. Hold on, let me let me set it up for you. It looks like one of those carvings in grass. <laughs> but see, at least I could see what I was doing. This one, I made a mistake. I had to pull it all out and do a couple petals over. But at least I realized what I had done wrong. I had forgotten one of my picots. So now how this is, this attaches to the rest of the design. See, this is, this is the other problem I'm having. Now this one, I realized my mistake as well. Now I seem to like this way, but see some of my, some of my, um, what do they call them? Chains. They look like arches to me, but they're not, they call them chains. See, they're not going the right way. I had to kind of twist them around. But this one, hey, Angie. She's not home. She's at the Mexican restaurant. Um, see, that one doesn't look too bad. But see, when I attach them, I attach them in the wrong spot. But see, I'm learning. So I, I know I know that. This one's supposed to go into a circle. The other thing I have to learn is when you do a piece like this, how you stitch it together. I had it stitched together, but it wasn't right. This has got to go over here somehow to make like a little circle. And I'm wanting, I'm wanting things, I want, I'm wanting to make things so that I can use them, you know, to put on journals or put on journal covers or like the e edge of a page. So you see, these are all my little scrappy doodles of things that, um, and then there's another one where you just take a thread. Okay, Ange, enjoy your meal. Um, where you don't do a chain, you just do a thread. And I I watched Rusty Kate do that, but mine keep keep sliding together. But there's so much to learn, you know. But I just wish I could sit down next to somebody. So that one's that one's not too too terribly bad. You like the green one? Yeah, I like it too. Of course, now I don't. I cut all my threads, so it's that may that may never recover. So I had gotten this from the market, and this has got knitted edgings and crochet edges and stuff in it. So um, I've been using trying to read the patterns for that. So I'm moving along, but I need a little help with the reverse the reverse work thing. And um, Malia had a, a D stash sale the other day. So I've got a couple more workbooks coming. And uh, she's going to look for me. Hopefully, I'll have some tatting projects in that. So, oh, thank you, Dawn. You're very sweet. And I was going to, I want to show you as I get, do my felting. Dawn was felting a couple days ago, and Kathy, uh, Calico Kate, and I have been talking about doing some felting. And um, my sisters and I, probably over a year or so ago, hmm, I wanted a sip of coffee before it got too cold. We were like all in, you know, we can do this. My sister Nancy is trained to be a floral a designer. And uh, she she's bought a sewing machine. She's started painting, and you know she's she's fairly talented. I gotta say, and uh, no, she's very talented. Okay, not fairly. I'm talking about with the painting. She just started. I mean, she she does amazing things. 
and um, her sewing machine. She made some really cute stuff for Christmas. Her sister, Jackie, the youngest, she doesn't think she's very talented, but she's, both girls have just started to learn how to crochet and, oh yeah, yeah, clusters. Yeah, Dawn, that's a good thought. Um, so since we've all three are retired, I've always kind of been in this art craft lane. My two sisters have not been. And so they're moving more into that uh, lane. And Jackie, the youngest, um, she really feels like she doesn't have any talent. But I think it's because she does, hasn't really tried. So she's learning how to crochet. She's doing very well with that. She's got a grandbaby uh, that is to arrive on Tuesday. So we're excited about that. So she's been making it. She made a blanket. and So she's doing really well. But when we decided we'd like to felt, we wanted to find some kind of an art form that we could all, hey, Marty, good morning. We wanted to find an art form that the three of us could maybe do together. And so we landed on felting. And um, I like it well enough, but I have fibromyalgia. And I discovered that that constant um, short motion of poking at the wool um, tends to be a little problematic for me. So I have kind of backed away from some of the felting, although I've done a few things. I still have all my wool. I mean, I have a ton of wool because when I was at the co-op, I was talking to a gal I had worked a shift with and she was trying to de some stuff and she sold me a lot of wool and a couple other things for 50 bucks. OK, so I just took it. Jackie, my youngest sister, she felt, I think, very well. And um, she doesn't think so, but she's worked at it a lot more and she does very well with it. Um, I haven't done so much. I don't think Nancy's done so much either. But in our community, I know Sharon Lombard felt, Dawn felt, um, Beth Schuler felt. Uh, now Beth and Dawn both have channels. I'm not sure if Sharon does. I apologize for not knowing that, but I don't know. So with my sisters, uh, we have watched Serafina, if you're interested in felting at all, a needle felting at all, uh, tune into her channel, S-A-R-A-F-I-N-A, S-A-R-A-F-I-N-A. Jackie is a sweetheart. We're so excited. We don't know what kind of baby we're having. Like her daughter is has two sons. And um, hi, Chris. Good morning. Hi, Nettie. And we're we're really praying for a girl. So we don't know. She didn't want to find out this time. So we're all going to be surprised. So Tuesday's the day. Rebecca has felt it. Okay, I didn't realize that. So this is just for beginners. I don't know a lot. I know a little bit. I'm going to show you what I know. Do some felting. I'll show you what I've done. Uh, I wanted to show my curly wool because I had mentioned that in Dawn's live, um, I guess it was last week sometime. So I wanted to show her. Hi, three, hi, oh, three G, I was gonna say G3. <laughs> um, I have never felt it, but now I'm seeing great patterns on. Oh, yeah. Mm. You can find wonderful felt on Etsy, please forgive me. You felt some, Marty? Oh, you have the arthritis. Yes, yeah, I got to do it in small doses. Now, of course, wet felting is totally, totally different. So I'm not going to really get into that. I want to do some wet felting too. I've got a couple projects in mind, but today I'm just going to do some needle felting. And one of the reasons I want to do it is because a while back I was gifted this beautiful little bird by Journey. And this is one of my prized possessions. And I put him on this um, cover, journal cover. Now, I don't know that um, Journey felted these individual pieces. She may have. I mean, if she did, she's amazing because they're really beautiful but even still if if she didn't that's it's still amazing she cut these pieces out and put this little bird together so this is really kind of my inspiration um today it's kind of twofold um <laughs> gail is not planning to start i hear you gail 
And uh, once when I was doing the paper, um, the fabric paper, I was cutting out these birds that I had these uh, die cuts for. So between that bird and the bird journey sent me, I kind of was thinking, oh, I just want to try to felt something and maybe some birds. So with that being said, I'm going to put my little book aside. And we've got a few folks here. Welcome to everyone. Even if you are shy and you haven't said hello, good morning, good morning, and welcome. Welcome to my replayers. Let's get felting. So I've just done a few simple things in the past. This is a gnome. I had these in my in the craft shop I was in. He's very simple. He's really just a... Uh, cylinder shape made with roving wool and then I covered it with some better wool and then used the curly wool for a beard little nose and I cheated and put a sock on his on his head these were a pretty good seller for me when I was in the craft shop and then several months ago now Sophia, Sophia hi Sophia you have a felting machine oh girl sure everything counts i did this little owl i don't know why i guess i was feel like i know aunt beck was doing owls for a while and i don't know so again not perfect but my own creation and you know it turned out okay it turned out okay and then i had forgotten until i saw dawn felting last week that i had started a sheet now this guy needs some more work but this is my sheep very similar to um what dawn was doing but her little guy had feet i made mine just flat i could have put his head up actually i could probably change the, the direction of his head because i'll show you that in a little bit there's uh you know felting is a little amazing really and truly so and then i did a couple of these little gnomes where they're again just little cylinders Oh, thanks, Marty. And, uh, you know, little noses. And you can see the white roving underneath. You know? And then I done a cat. He turned out pretty good. My granddaughter scoffed up the cat. But I have another cat. I have a cat head here started. And I think these are probably... Um, classes or lessons you can take with Serafina. I'm not sure. So see, he doesn't have one ear, but you can see his little nose and he's starting to look like something. And then I'm pretty sure it was Serafina I did these pumpkins with. This guy was running out of orange. So I just used, um, you know, whatever I had. But I'm a beginner. I, I you know, I can follow directions. But this was kind of cool because you felted the pieces and twisted them and then you know you just stabbed them into the pumpkin so these really aren't as hard as they might look okay so when my sisters and i started we needed needles of course and i bought a kit i got this on amazon i don't remember how much i paid for it but it came with three different size needles. I don't know about the needle sizes. I don't really know what you want different sizes for. Came with a pair of scissors, this foam. I'm not crazy about that foam. Um, finger protectors, a pair of scissors that I say that, a little pokey tool, no idea. But this is where I got my stock of needles. The needles are very sharp. The needles do break. And then we decided we needed, of course, something to stab into. So I made uh, myself and my sisters just a pillow of rice, really. And you can go on the Internet and find directions how to do this. I just took some muslin. I doubled it, double stitched around, filled it with rice to the way I wanted it so I can work and stab into that i also have a piece of thick foam like what you would say maybe furniture cushion furniture foam i guess no idea where i even got this 
This might have been in with the box of stuff I bought from that gal uh, from the co-op. So I mostly use this. And let's see what else I need to tell you right up front. Oh, I purchased this. Now you can use a needle by itself. They look like this without any kind of a holder. It's got a little, um, kind of looks like an Allen wrench. It's got that little turn. Looks like the letter L, you know, if the needle's going that way. Okay. But I purchased this and this little tool, this took me a while to figure this out. I don't know if I can pull it out, but this, you pull this out and the needle with that little ledge, hey, Christine, um, pops in that piece of wood and then you slide it back into your handle. So this is a single felting needle with a handle. And then this one's got eight. This unscrews. I can show you that, I think. Now, of course, the more needles you have, the faster the felting goes. But see, all the needles just drop down in. Not that you need to have all this stuff. You don't have to have all this stuff. Uh, when you buy the needles, they come in a big package, generally, you know, where you get like a lot of them instead of just one needle. And uh, when I first started, I just held the needle in my hand by that little handle and felt it. And then the gal that I bought all that wool from, someone must have made this for her. This is just a doorknob handle or like a drawer handle. Not a doorknob. That's too small. Like a drawer handle. And then they fashioned it with some, you know, they drilled some holes and put four needles in it for her. So if you know somebody who's clever, or maybe you're clever yourself, like Pam, you could probably build that. Now, I'm assuming I can get a screwdriver in there and take this apart should I need to replace those. The needles will break. You have to be careful. The needles will make you bleed. You have to be careful. <laughs> Sophia says, my felting machine looks like a sewing machine and just has a bit that has the multi-needles in it. But it's really for felting large pieces of fabric. Yes. Yes. Okay. Cool. Cool beans. All right. So before you all arrived, and welcome, welcome to everyone who's come in. I started to felt one of the easiest... Um, things to do i think okay chris is going to be right back um yes the needles are sharp and they're barbed and so what happens is when it goes through the um wool those barbed areas grab the wool and and starts agitating the wool and it felt it and they all all the fibers interlock and you can you can make a piece of fabric Roving, you'll hear people talk about roving. What did I do with my? I wanted to show you some roving. Roving is just kind of um, I don't want to say a dirty white, but that's what it looks like to me. It looks like just a dirty white um piece of wool. I had a bag that had my brown in it and had some roving. What can I do with mine? Oh, I don't want to pull out my big, well, it looks like this here. Let me pull this out. Because some of you, and maybe some who are going to watch in the replay, uh, might not know what that is. I'm going to have wool all over. Please. It just looks like that. It's not white, white. It's kind of a creamy white. And it's a lower grade wool. And um, this is what I use to build my pumpkins around. It's roving underneath that I made that solid piece. Same, you can see a little bit underneath here of my sheep. It's all roving underneath there. Because wool, wool is expensive. And to you can certainly use your good stuff to make the body. But if you're going to cover it, that's a lot of good 
fiber that you're using to really just make the shape. So most folks, I would say, use their roving, the cheaper wool, to make the initial shape that they want to work with and then cover it with their good wool. At least that's my take on it. And you can buy all colors, all you know, all kinds. There's all different grades. There's so much to know. Um, I'm thinking she spins. She has a lot of information on her channel about fiber and wool. Um, Lisa, my eclectic life, she does as well. And of course, we all know we can search the internet. But you also can get sucked into buying other pretty kinds of wool. I don't know if you can tell, but this is all pinks and greens and then it's got a sparkly stripe through it like it's like it's glossomer like it's this looks like it came from a unicorn <gasps> I had to have that I made a hummingbird that I threw out with that no idea what I would do with this color and then my sisters and I went to, well, actually Jackie was sick. She ended up not being able to go to a place about an hour from my home, still in Jersey. And we did a lion, but that was combo dry and wet felting. And we, we built the shape and we covered the aperture. And my lion was horrible. I took him apart too. But this is, Dawn, this is what I was telling you about. This is my curly wool. See, and I'm just going to attach more of that onto my sheep so he'll be fluffy. But I have, you know, of course, I haven't done that. So, and this is, I mean, people raise sheep and different sheep because of their wool and the lanolin in the wool and how it felt. And I mean, there's a whole, there's so much to know. So this is just bare bones starting at the very beginning if you think you might like to do something like this and so they tell you not to cut your wool to pull your wool and one of the easier things to do is to take a cookie cutter and use it as your shape so you can load it up with wool and then start felting and you have a shape. So I started earlier this morning. I had this shape, which I thought, well, then you know what? That might make a cute birdhouse. You can felt with cat hair. Oh, I didn't know that. I know I have some uh, llama. I pulled that out. I can't find that. That's over on my table somewhere. So I kind of left a hole in the center, which you don't have to. You can cut this, of course. So I layered in a couple layers of wool and just started felting it. And then I started felting just some strips. Now, where's my other? There it is. Two little strips that I'm going to felt on this. So I thought I'd show you this. But. We can start at the very beginning. I don't want to get ahead of myself here. But you're going to see, if, you're, if you've not had any exposure to felting, you're going to see how easily, you know, it attaches together. Um, you don't need to use glue or anything. Which, that you know, that just kind of amazed me. So all I did was load in some wool and i started felting so i'm going to do that but this time i'm going to use this little flower and hoping you know, i just i stole this out of my grandkids um play-doh kit see now i have a couple of little um this little hand a heart see this this is this flower i think which is kind of sad i didn't really put much felt in there so we're going to give it another go uh is Sophia leaving she probably has to go make dinner or whatever okay she's dozing okay all right Sophia maybe we'll see you a little later oh, I felt like a nap right before I came on and now I'm energized okay so let's see let's pull out let's oh wow that's really a break 
go wild heart. Let's do a little bit of pink. And get a little bit of green. Now sometimes I have a hard time pulling the wool apart. It's you know it can be a little troublesome to pull it apart. And just as a reminder, if there's something you need me to see, please put it in caps. It's not offensive. It just helps me see my screen better. So I'm going to uh, lay this on my foam. And I'm using my foam rather than my pillow because it's a flat surface. And I just take my, I don't know if they call these skeins or what they call this part. And I'm just going to pull a little piece off and then I'm going to start opening this up and kind of flattening it down a little bit. And now that one came apart pretty easy. Just give it a little tug. And I'm just going to start loading in a little bit of this. I've got some other kind of little fiber in there. It's just going to give a character. It's just going to give a character, I'm saying here. I'm going to take a little bit of the green, give that a little tug. I don't need as much. I'm going to try to pull some of that out. Of course, I can't really. I guess that's probably where the pokey tool would come in handy if you're doing something like that. Now I'm just loading up the, and you can go as thin or as thick as you like. So if you're using a cookie cutter, you just want to load in your first layer of wool. I'm going to use my single tool and uh, I'm going to come around the edges and I'm just stabbing down into the foam around the edge to get the shape of that cookie cutter, trying to get all the way out to the edge. And all these little wild hairs, I just kind of grab them with my needle and push them down in now these little skinny like this little skinny trenchy part that's a little more fiddly because you don't have as much room to get your needle down in there but you want to try to get as close to the edges as you can now the thing with the cookie cutter is see it's pretty level at least these guys you've got the edge on the outside but in here you can get your needle down pretty close now I can see where I didn't get some wool up against certain parts of it here so I'm just kind of moving my now of course I'm going to turn my work so I can see what I'm doing see I can see I missed an edge over there but as I stab down those fibers are starting to um, adhere to themselves. Now, the other thing you have to be careful of, see, I didn't get the bottom of the stem at all, is that it will start felting itself to whatever surface you're felting on. So when you're using a cookie cutter, it can be a little fiddly because you want to get your shape, but then you really need to, really should flip it so that it doesn't attach itself to your foam or whatever you're, I think I just got myself. And, you, and you'll think, oh, I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to get my finger. I'm not going to get my finger. You will get your finger. So now I felted that down. I'm going to just pull some more of this out. And you can mix colors too. Like, uh, for my gnome, I didn't really have any flesh color for the nose. So I would take a little bit of pink and a little tiny bit of maybe orange and a little bit of red. And then you just keep pulling it and you can like hand knead it together and make a color. 
So that's kind of cool. Now, once I get this going pretty well, I'm going to take it out and take the mold off, if you will, using the cookie cutter as a mold. Now, the flower that I made before, this one, see, I, didn't, I made it real flimsy. I want to make it a little thicker than, than what I did here. And you'll see, I don't know if you can tell there on camera, but it's start it's not fluffy anymore. It's kind of lost its fuzziness. Because my needle is aggravating the fibers. All right, so take my cookie cutter off. And hopefully I've got enough here. Let's see, I've got a space there where it's not really felted. See, I've got an empty space down there. So I'm just going to flip this. Yeah, it's not going to go... When you use it, when you have a shape that's um, like the birdhouse, I could flip it. So I'm just going to felt it a little bit here to get that other side. And then I'm going to put it back in my cookie cutter. It's not going to be perfect. Oh, you have a kit? Oh, that's fun. And you can cut it. You'll be able to cut it and trim it. So I'm going to take this back up. I'm going to put my cookie cutter back down. I'm going to pop it back in. And I want to add some green in that spot where I've met where I missed it. And then I'm going to add another layer of pink because I want it to be thicker. Again, like coloring, felting is not, if you're in, um, if you're the kind of person who likes to just get things done and quickly, felting may not be for you. Although it may be a good thing, it might slow you down a little bit. Uh, but it takes time. Of course, the more needles you have that you're poking with, the quicker it will felt. See, like it'll felt quicker. Of course, it's difficult with um, it being in this mold to use, you know, a tool that's got a lot more needles. Because you're agitating it, you know, all that more. You're covering more surface. And then once I get to the, the play, oh, see, I just, I just, I looked up at the computer screen and I stabbed right into my finger. You can't be doing that. You got to be watching what you're doing. I was going to get some band-aids and I didn't do it. Woo, baby. If I look up and talk, I have to stop. All right, so I'm going to take some more. I don't want to get, I don't want to get any, I don't want to get any blood on my wool. Wow. All right, so I'm going to take off a little more of this pink. See, it can be tough to, of course, I don't have too much grip. Yes, no looking away for sure. <laughs> I'm going to just pop some more. This pink is very nice. Now, you can felt just a big. Like Sophia was saying, she has the machine to really felt large areas or, or large pieces of fabric. And you can do that too. Of course, it would take you forever, but you know, you would use um, you know, one of these tools that have more than one. 
needle in it, it will go a lot better for you. See, and then I was thinking even these for slow stitching projects, right? You could do little shapes or like Dawn has said, a cluster. You could use some of the felting that you did for a cluster and you could stitch on buttons and uh, sequins. See, I don't really know even how to stitch on a sequence, but I would like to. I guess you just pick a thread that's kind of clear or matches and just go through the center. I guess you, maybe you can attach them down with a French knot. I'm not sure. What did Dawn say? You can use felt sheets and felt it too. You, you mean like um, use a sheet of felt and then add felt to it and felt on top of it? Is that what you mean, Dawn? And make like a little picture or whatever? Or cut a square? A French Gail says, yes, Larry, a French knot or sew through the middle and over one edge. Okay, thanks, Gail. But see, I'm thinking, how cute would this little flower be with some sequins, right? Either for the center or around the edge. I mean, and sometimes you'll be in the thrift store. And if you see like little cookie cutters, like I just, I could kick myself because I just cleaned out my cookie cutters and sent a bunch of them to, and then most of, most of them were seasonal, I would think. But I should have looked at those small ones I got rid of more carefully because like a little star or a little heart. Okay, now can you see how that's getting thicker? Because I added that extra wool. Now I'm just going to felt this a little bit more here before I flip them. And seed beads? Yes, Gail. Oh, a seed bead would be delightful. Tom says the sheets of felt will felt to the wool, yes, and to each other. Oh, cool. Okay. I wouldn't have thought of that. That's a wonderful tip. All right. Now let me get this bigger one. Now you can, you know, felt a sheet and, and make that and then cut out whatever you want to. But the cookie cutter is just a quick way to get a shape. Yeah, looks like I got some of my phone up, foam I'm felting in there. Now see, this is not this is not attached here. It's kind of loose, loosey goosey. I didn't really. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start stabbing the edge of that leaf down into the stem and that will see that will attach see like with my sheep when i thought oh why didn't i do this on camera this ear was a little wonky it was hanging down i thought oh i should have put and i thought oh you silly goose all you have to do is if that's where i want it just start stabbing and felting where i want that ear and it's it's like a facelift see this is a little loose and wonky so I want that ear to be up. So all I do is I can come behind it and I just start stabbing at that edge of the ear. And then right in here, and I'm attaching it to the head, seeing it just shores it up and puts it in place. So when I was saying I should have put his head back more, if I felt behind his head into the body, I'll be able to attach that. Oh, I'm not in screen. See, and the more I felt, the more is little noodle. Now you have to be careful. Ear lift, right? Face lift, yes. You have to be careful because when you you think oh, this is thick, it's not going to that needle's not going to come through and get me down here. I'm telling you, you're going to get yourself. So you have to pay attention. This is not something you can sit, in my opinion. You can sit in front of the TV 
and do. You have to pay attention to what you're doing. Or you're going to look like a, a war, you know, a war victim. Yeah, easy to maneuver for sure. So I could take a little more time with that flower. See, now this, this really can be felted a lot more. And I want to just maybe stick that. But this is a good thickness, I think. What did I do with my... I'm going to use the one that has the four. What did Marty say? I know. Wait a minute. What did Marty say about the thrift store? Hold on. I got to catch that. I know someone was looking for dominoes the other day. I found some. Oh, Pam. Pam said that. I missed what Marty said. You can turn your cookie cutter over too. I don't know. Wait a minute. Let me do this first and I'll check. See, because it's stuck in there. Oh, Marty. Okay, Marty gets the Genius Award. See, Lori would not have figured that out. Oh, Marty, thank you. Oh, my gosh. Well, that opens up a whole new world. A whole new world. Woohoo! Okay, so I don't want to spend all day sitting here doing the fleur. But see, once you get it to how you want it, and you felted it, see, this is getting nice and thick. And I will felt this more because I want it, I don't want it to be all swirly looking. I want it to be solid. Solid. Solid as a rock. I think I got something in my eye. Could it be a fiber? Let's put a little yellow in the center. Yes. What Dawn says. I'll show you that in a, in a second. That's one reason why I wanted this to be a little thicker. See, I'm I'm really tugging on that. And I oh, some of it, some of it you have to pull it this way, I guess. Yeah, what Dawn is saying is if you once you get it thick, then you have to be really careful. Of course, you could put those things on and protect your hand or put on um, but you know, this will go through a, a a glove too you have to be real gentle and careful but you can do the edge and you i just you know like to take maybe little tiny pokes what did burn just say <sighs> oh thanks for the help brenda pat 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 on the right <laughs> Yeah, that was a good tip. I'm glad you said that. That would never have occurred to me. So you can really clean up. It takes time and you have to be very careful. I don't want to hear any stories about somebody had to go get stitches because they watched Lori's felting video. That would be horrible. Horrible. Okay, this really, because this here is really too chubby. Needs to be flatter. And if you've got a good arm and this motion doesn't bother you, you can go, I mean, you can really go home and So you get the idea. No ER for the felt needle removal, please. Yes. So I'm just going to 
you know, and you can start out with a little because you can always add. See, but when I take my needle and say, I just want a little center. I don't want that to be a big. Yes, Kathy says her cookie cutters are in Missouri. Yeah, you need a little set for Florida for sure. Of course, I'm going to show you something else I tried earlier. See? Now, you could put sequins on there. You don't have to do the felt in the center, but you can. I mean, just like a lot of other things that we all do, right? It's, limit, it's limitless. You can start thinking about stuff and just add. Let's just see. I have these little, have these little buttons here. Let's just see. See, I got this little pink button. See if I can just add a little pink button in the center. I could stitch that in. It looks cute. And you could stitch around the edge. Hang a little charm. You could hang a little charm on there. So when I was cutting my paper the other day, my fabric paper, and I'm going to put this aside. I'm thinking, oh, man, I love those birds, huh? I love the birds. What did Brenda say? Project may contain <laughs> blood pathogens. No blood. No blood. Although I do have a, it is a little, you know, those puncture wounds are a bit dicey. A bit dicey. Yes, thrift stores. So then I was wondering how, if I could use my dye without ruining my dye to um, felt. So before you all arrived, now remember, to use your die cutter, you know, we've got that little edge that's the cutting, the cutting edge. So on this one, I've got the beak, but see on the little bird, The beak isn't there. So, anywho, I plopped in some felt, I mean, some wool, and started felting. And you can do it. You can do it. And then you can you could probably leave this fluffy too, right? If you want the bird to look like he's really got some feathers. I think he needs a little more on this on his head. So I'm just pulling off a little bit. And I think what they recommend is it's been a long time since I've looked at a felting video, if I'm being honest with you. I think they recommend thin layers. Just add thin, thin layers. Now you might want, maybe you want that beak to be a different color. So let's take a little tiny bit, bit and see if I can get. And I'm just kind of pulling it on top of itself. Like I'm grabbing a piece of the wool with the edge of my needle and dragging it where I want it. And then, and then felting it down. I don't know if you can see that. I'll just add a little bit at a time. I 
this don't look like a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit of wool and then you felt. Ooh, just a little bit. Oh, this is the baby bird I started. It doesn't really look like a baby bird. Just a little bit. Do -do. Looks like I've missed the top of his head a bit. I shall add some in there. Now I also want to be mindful that I'm felting it to my foam, so I'm going to have to flip it. Whoa! Yes, you can use an eye. I'm going to try to felt an eye on just to show you that you can. See, now he's real fuzzy because he's, I was felting him down into that foam. So I'm going to try to come back in here and clean up where his nose be. Pull in some of these wild hairs. He's starting to shape up a little, huh? But I wouldn't add the details like the little black eye or whatever you want to add until he's just about the way you'd want him. Now, because this is so thin and not like a cookie cutter, I'm not sure that I can flip. I mean, I can flip it, but I don't know if I can get it to stay. Maybe if I felt it this way for, well, I don't know. Let's see. I want to get some more wool on here. Can you use my wool mat instead of foam, or will I uh, the felt the felt would felt together? And what you sent me is so nice. I would not want to just um, felt on it just as a uh, surface. You know, I want to save that for something better. Plus, it's not real thick. You want something really deep. So when you put your needle in, see. If my needle goes all the way down, it's not, it's still hitting the foam. I don't know if, can you see that? So you want this deep. Or else, you know, you're hitting your table or your surface. And um, I would think you would break your needle, dull, dull the needle. See, he looks pretty chubby, but because. And that's just my opinion. I don't know. Hey, there's Mina. Hi, Mina. Oh, she can't stay. That's okay. Well, thank. Oh, thanks, Mina. Thanks for coming in and saying hi. Appreciate that. I'm going to add some more. And then just really take my time at the beginning. I'm just kind of like tucking it. See, with the cookie cutter, you've got a nicer, a nice edge, nice like wall that you have that you can work on. With this die cut, you know, it's, well, you know what the die cuts are like, girls, right? It's just that little ledge. Now, I'm wondering if I do what Marty said, if I pick this all up together, if I can get him to stay in that mold. No, not too bad, not too bad. And then felt this side. Whoop. 
Have fun, Mina. She's going to go hang out with her cousin. How fun. I kind of felt it around the die cut. Now you can put a wing on him. You could do your own thing. You could probably put stitch a wing. You could put paper, fabric. Or if you use the die cut, and this came with a little wing. You know, I could do felted wing. But see, he's starting to starting to puff up and be a nice. Now, I could leave them that way, but I think for me personally, I want them felted down a little more. Let's see. Do I have any black? Oh, I might have used a black for my kitty. I don't have much black. If I have any, I didn't have much. I have plenty of wool. I just didn't know I have plenty of, on top of the black. Yeah. This is a real dark brown. That might work. It just like I've got a few more little bags here. Yeah, that might be my might be my best option. Let's see if I can get a smidge. Thank you, Kathy. Okay, so now I'm just starting to, I know it looks really ridiculous, right? But I'm going to continue. I'm just grabbing those little wild hairs and pulling them up into the center. And I'm trying to make that really small. Now, it started out really huge. And, you know, you need a lot less gills taken off. Okay, Gail, have a great day. Thank you for being here. Um, and then it'll get smaller and smaller as I felt. See, I'm waiting too long to pull it up. I'm really ripping into my foam. See, and then what I was thinking is now I have this, I did this really large. Part of it was intentional. Part of it is because I don't really um, have a lot of practice. But see, now I can sew a little seed bead or a little tiny button right on top of that to make it look like his eye. But he looks like he's got, you know, black feathers around his face, kind of like a cardinal. But one reason I wanted to felt today was because I wanted to try to do a big, bigger piece Oh, thank you, Dawn. Um, I want to do a bigger piece and just felt it flat and then run it through my die cutting machine and see if I could cut out a bird. So I'm thinking it's going to have to be felted down pretty well to be able to, to cut it on my machine. Has, any, has anybody tried that with hand with a hand felted fabric running it through a die cutter? Let's pick out a fabulous color. What other color do I want for a bird? Yep, Dawn's thinking I can. I think I can. I think I can. Uh, 
I like this gold. So I'm going to attempt to make a huge, not huge, I need a piece big enough to put the bird on. And I don't want it too wide because I want it to go through my cutter. So maybe I'll take some of this gold and maybe I'll take a little bit of this red. Let's try mixing some. I'm going to just start pulling this. Now, somewhere I have, if you were in Dawn's live, uh, we were talking about carding wool where you, they take these big combs and they comb it. Uh, Dawn said, <laughs> Pam finally pulled herself out of bed. Pam, I don't know how you keep up with your life, girl, with all those puppies and all those kitties. Okay. Uh, Dawn said, you can die cut some felt, if you have it, and attach it to the back of your bird. Oh, that's true. Anyway, I guess if you carded this, you know, it probably would mix better. I have a couple of um, dog brushes that I bought to use as carter, but I don't know where I have those. You think you think you would put them in where, where your wool is, but I didn't. This is going to be a bird of many colors, I think. That's kind of cool looking. So then let's take some more of this red. I'm just going to lay that down and some gold. <laughs> Dawn wants those big rolling carters. Yeah. Oh, the one you plug in, you mean? Oh, yeah. The lady that had the uh, llamas that does, she's about a half an hour from me. And uh, my sister, Nancy, her best friend's son was getting married. And, uh, well, he when he got engaged, his, um, his gal loves llamas. And so they went to this llama farm, and that's where he proposed. And they were walking the llamas. And so my sister, Nancy, wanted to get some wool from those two llamas and uh, make something. I don't know what she ended up making. Uh, make something with the uh, fiber from the llamas that they were walking when they got engaged. So she wanted to go to this llama farm and it's a half hour from where I live. So we went and the lady was very nice. And uh, she at the time, I think she had seven llamas. So we let, we had our pictures taken with them and then she took us in the house and she showed us all her different wool and it was really cool. She was very, very sweet to do that for us. I think it was after the, it wasn't during, you know, the onset of COVID, but I don't remember wearing masks. We were outside most of the time, but. Anywho, I bought some bars of soap from her that she felted. I should get those out and show you. That's one thing I want to do. Okay, so I'm just layering. And this is going to have to be thicker. My thing, my my thinking is if I don't felt it enough, I might have a hard time cutting it. But, um, gosh, I don't remember the lady's name. Beverly? But she had one of those carding machines. And she was showing us how she cards the llama wool. I like that color that I mixed. Probably going to need some more of that. I 
But when we walked into her house, she had like a little porch area that we walked through before we went into the kitchen, if I'm remembering correctly. And she had piles and piles of llama wool in these big open bins and then bags and bags of it that she had already carted and, you know, was all cleaned and washed and combed. So if you have any interest in all at all in that kind of thing, go into a llama farm. It's, it's cool. I would think alpacas are the same. All right. So I'm just got that on my phone. And I'm going to use my four needled handle. And just get this started. just thinking if it's not felted too tight it, it I might have trouble cutting it Woo! I bought all this wool a long time ago, so I don't know what they're they're getting for wool now. So I'm not even sure what a what a good price. Uh, maybe Dawn would know a good price would be. But like Pam said, Pam has the kit. If you buy a kit, if you're able to do that, I would think they come with a needle and everything. It might be a way to go to start. You know, this is felting down a lot. Uh, faster. And I've changed the needles in this one that has the eight. But this doesn't, they don't, for whatever reason, I don't know. They don't seem like they're as sharp as the other ones. But they're all from the same package. See, this is um, very see-through at this point. You see? Can you see that it's see-through? Yeah, I'm not sure either. The stuff I have is from the night. Oh, you have really, oh, wow, that's cool. Wow, that's really cool. Just, I, I'm a very, um, what do, they, what do they say? Tactile? I just love touch. I <laughs> love touch and stuff. And so I love feeling. I love feeling the wool. Oh, that's right. That's right. I forgot about that, Pam. Mayan doesn't have directions for a, a particular purpose. The kits that I put together was if somebody just wanted to start felting, I'd supplied I guess a couple needles and a variety of uh, colors and then some roving I think if I remember correctly all right let's add a little more on here let's put a little more of this gold here and then some red Oh, <laughs> 1900s. Okay. What is she saying? Not really. I literally, but literally like 1990s. Okay. I was thinking, how the heck did you get wool from the 1900s? But hey. All right. Now we're taking a little bit of the gold and a little bit of this. This is kind of an orangey red. And I'm going to just mix that by hand because I can. Well, spring training, I've been watching my Phillies play. 
I think they ended up winning yesterday. I don't know. I was so frustrated yesterday. I wanted to draw. I'm trying to work through the foundations course for the um, color pencil. Um, academy that I joined and I had a couple days prior I had printed off the line art for a dog's no dog's eye and um, also printed off the supply list for what color pencils I was going to need and uh, I thought well I'll come back in and do the tutorial I'll have everything ready so till I pull the pencils, get my tracing, my line art done, you know, get my surface ready, all that jazz. Do you think I could find that tutorial? Hey, Kel, hi. Nice to see you. You think I could find that tutorial? After a half an hour, I went on their, the Facebook page and said, I am so frustrated. I cannot find. I thought I was, you know, hallucinating. So this one lady responded pretty quickly, though. I'm so kind of her. She said, I think it's here. And I thought I had looked there, but here was I was searching the site for a lab pup eye. Then I tried Labrador pup's eye. Here they they called it something totally different. I forget what they called it. That's why I couldn't get it to come up on the search. Oh, goodness. Typical glory day. And when you're doing something like this, just remember to flip it. Not that you couldn't get it off of your surface, but I think you might tear up whatever you're working on top of. This is my goal. Oh, he's going to be purdy. He's going to be purdy, purdy little purdy bird. Little, little tweety bird. Dawn says, I've got someone coming to dig me out today, Kellyanne. Whoa. Ow. See, it, it came through the side and got my thumb. Good thing Angie's not here. I'm trying to go straight down. See, now I'm thinking, well, it's still fluffy like this. It's not, I don't know that I would really be able to. Yeah, I definitely can't manage it myself. Oh, I hope so. Took me 20 minutes to clean off my car. Oh, you girls are talking snow? Oh, my. I hate to tell you, it's like spring here today. I can't imagine what... Kathy, what kind of weather are you having? Is it warmer? I mean, it's probably like a summer day where Kathy is. Oh, you girls are close geographically oh that's cool cool i know i've probably asked before brenda said we got eight inches heavy wet snow friday in south michigan in the 40s and it's melting now Kathy said it's sunny and in the 70s. Shorts and a t-shirt. Wow. So Dawn and Kel got hit by the snow. You met in real life and you hadn't known you didn't know each other before meeting on YouTube. That's that's fun. That side's not looking too bad. 
just don't know how much you would really, how long you'd have to fill it to get it to look like, you know, a piece of felt. Let's just show you what Kathy sent me. Kathy sent me this beautiful piece of felt. Oh my gosh. Okay, Pam. Pam, God bless her. She's still shoveling snow. Pam, you need, you need to get that 13-year-old you got there to give you a hand. He looked like he's a nice strapping young man. He could get he could get out there. Give mama a hand. If you missed it. You have to go watch Pam's. Uh, well, first of all, she did a haul thing. Oh, and Kathy did a haul thing. Um, I love watching the haul video. <laughs> I love watching the haul videos. Kathy's got music playing behind her. Hers is like, uh, it's like a Zen experience. But anyway, if you missed Pam's grandson, you have to go watch. Oh my gosh, she's so stinking cute. Love me some babies. I'm always watching those use YouTube videos with them, them. Some of them babies. Oh my gosh. Some of the stuff they do. I don't know. I might cut. This could be an epic fail. This is an experiment. This is a spearmint. I certainly could add more on there, but I don't know how long you want to sit here and watch me. Dab this. Now I got to get my machine. All right. So I know I already have that red bird, but I kind of just really like the red. Okay. Let's see. If I put this here, Just trying to think about if I do it there, and then I can do his little wing. Oh, he's got to be this way though. Oh, that might be good because then if I do a yellow wing to put on there, that might be good, huh? All right, let's see. Now I've got my cutter. I have the cuddle bug. Let me put that off to the side for a moment. I have a sip of cold coffee. All right, let's see. And I'm pretty sure I know where my plates are. It's a miracle, it's a miracle, it's a craft room, a miracle. So I'm going to need plate A, plate B, and plate C, I do believe, I do believe. Grab my little, my little machine. I guess you could probably felt to a piece of regular, could you felt to a piece of regular fabric? Oh, we might have to have a try at that. Okay, let's see if I can get this in screen here. Actually, my desk was pretty clear today. So I didn't have to do a bunch of cleanup. 
All right. My plate is going in. I'm putting my little felted pieces in. And I'm a cranking. Mm, a fair amount of pressure. I can get it. Come here, you little tweeter. He is precious. Okay, let me see if I can. Oh, yeah, I can get one out. I can get one of that little guy out. Hold on. Where's my. Oh, my gosh. Sorry, this is why I do this stuff because. <laughs> Kathy Whitney, hi. Oh, look at the baby one. Look. Oh, my God. Oh, where'd he go? Oh, my gosh. He's a Adorable. Look at them. I should have. I have to save this piece of felt so I can dig out his little wing. See, I still have that. How sweet is that? All right. Woohoo! No epic fail. Okay. So now I have a little more of a complicated, all right, let's see, let's just see, let's just see what I, no, I don't think that would be good. Let me see if I can grab a piece of, um, hmm, I'm just seeing if I have a piece of something. Well, that might do just for a trial. Let's just let let's just see. Oh my gosh, I'm so in love with those birds. Honestly, if my arm can take it, I'm gonna I'm gonna make some more sheets of felt. See, it's not too thick, but. It's just a little chunky. That's better than using it as a, I mean, they all have their, he'll look better once I get a bead on for the eyeball. I can use a little bird as a wing on this guy. Can't really see. I could stitch around maybe. All right, so here's just a piece of cotton. I don't know that this is going to work. Let's, um... I might ruin the needle. You know. Because it's not, it's just plain fiber. It's not hairy. It's not hairy. Chris is back. So she had to go out and get her food at the economy kitchen. So she's set for the week. I'm going to try this needle here, not the one in my handle. Hmm. 
I think that would dull down your needle very, very much. I don't want to pull it too hard. That kind of looks cool, though, huh? I have some buttons or some paper on there, but see, I'm getting pieces of uh, foam, which, you know, maybe. Look, I got coffee dyed stains on this and everything. I don't know what the heck I was doing. Now, if you choose to and you want to get involved in this, they have really nice mats you can buy. It's in there pretty good. I mean, if I really super yanked on it, I could get it off. But that might not look bad as a cluster of some kind, you know, trim that off, put some buttons, a little hang downy thing, you know. You know, I think I think that has possibilities. That's just a regular piece. Um, Brenda's saying, Chris, I watched some of your replay from this morning. Good. Uh, Don said I made mine right before you went live. Oh, the thing to poke into? <clears throat> and got it done. No, got it done. All right. So let's try. <clears throat> this cookie cutter is a little more intricate because the body is separate and the wings are separate. So let's see if I can felt this. And let's put a little blue at the bottom. Dawn says, yes, the pillow. Gotcha. Okay. Let's put a little blue down here at the bottom. I'm not ready for that. I want them to be separate. And they're really kind of trying to attach themselves to Okay, let me get some of that cool stuff with the sparkly little sparkly bits. Hey there, Shaz. Hi, Shaz. Hope everyone is having a good weekend, she said. I am. Thank you. All right, let's see. Blue may not have been the best color to, oh, that's quite a lot. The best color to put. But I was looking for a contrast. So let's just, we're just going to go with it. We're going to go with it. And then I want to get some in there for the body. That might give us a good start. And let's choose. Let's use the gold. A little bit of this gold. I'm liking this gold. My pokey tool is not working all that great because it's um, not long enough to get down in there. And my fingers won't get in there because it's not skinny enough. Let's do it this way. I'm using the back end of that needle to just kind of tamp it down before I start felting. Oh my 
give us a decent start. We'll see. Okay, I'm going to use my single. Tunisian crochet. I haven't really investigated that, and I've thought about looking at that, but... Oh, well, it's still crochet. It's like I have all this stuff, I think. Oh, you probably need that long, a long hook, right? The long needle. I do like the way knitting looks rather than crochet for most parts, but for some reason I've been in a crochet mood. I've been doing a lot of crocheting lately. All right, so same as before. I'm just starting to felt down with my single needle. Trying to get the shape of that butterfly. Let's see if I've got enough. I'm going to try to do what Marty suggested. And then felt it down this side. Oh, Marty, I just can't tell you the, how wonderful that is to be able to do that. I don't know why that would. Okay, Dawn, I don't know why I would not have ever thought of that, but I just know I wouldn't have. Just looking for that puffiness to go away, right? And then once you would get it to the way you want it to look, you know, then you say, okay, I'm done. Now, my limited past experience has told me that, taught me, I should say, that I want it to be thicker. Got a couple of rough spots on that cookie cutter. I hope my, my big head's not in the way. All right, let's get some more of the gold. I might have to pull out. Yeah, it is. A, I was rooting through. I've got a tub of um, Play-Doh for my grands. And I have purchased probably a Goodwill, a big bag of plastic, you know, cookie cutters. And some basic shapes I stole out of there for my craft room. And then this morning I was thinking, oh, I can't believe I don't have a flower. So I went rooting in their tub and sure enough where there was that little flower. But then I spied the butterfly. So I wasn't sure how that would be. Okay, let's pack some more of that blue. Let's get some more of this green and silver. There's some pink. There is some blue in there, I think. Looks like a navy. I love sparkles. I love sparkles.
start tamping this down. I don't think I got much blue in there. I wish we would get a little snow. My husband's glad we didn't get any because, of course, I don't shovel it. He's got a snow blower, but if it would be just a little bit, he would shovel rather than drag out the snow blower. But I love to look at it. I love to look at it coming down. And, uh, I can enjoy it without having to do any of the work. And I don't have to think about going to work at it anymore, making that decision. That's nice. Flipping. Now he's not going to be attached, right? Because this cookie cutter is separate. So when I take it out, I'm going to have to decide to put him together. I think I'm going to have to go through my die cuts and look at them differently and see what other. Oh, you know what? I pulled out a. Oh, look, girls. I forgot I pulled out this little butterfly one. That might that might look cute. Ooh. What color should I use? OK, I'm going to take this out. Yeah, he is attached a little bit because some of that's kind of running over. All right, so there's his body. Whoa, body's off the cliff. So I've got one set of wings there and a set of wings here. So I'm going to put these together. Lightly felt those together. Now I kind of laid this in the cookie cutter a little on the lumpy side. So you want to keep that in mind. If you really pull out your, your wool and lay down a nice thin layer to get started. I think you'll have a better end result. Just kind of felting, trying to felt this together. Oh yes, Kathy, that's a good idea. Kathy says she needs to die cut some of her already felted wool for slow stitching. Yes. This one's much thicker. The swingy, the swingy ding. All right, now I'm going to take the body. And felt that onto the wings. See how that turns out. You see what I'm doing? I'm just kind of moving that over a little bit. 
by dragging it and popping it on top of itself and then going down through those other layers. Try to get the body to adhere to the wings. Well, he's not the prettiest butterfly I ever did see, but you get the idea. Now, I think there's a way to clean off your foam. I just kind of like scraped it. I didn't Google. I'm just kind of pinching it. I didn't want to use tape because I didn't know if that would leave a tape, like a sticky residue. But I know you're supposed to. I should have asked that. Pam says, yes, she's done scooping for now. Still have some left, but decided to play instead. Good. It's good to rest in between for sure. Don't do too much at once. Okay, there's little fuzzy bits I don't want. So there's that guy. I can't say that I really like him that much, but at least you can see what you can do with a cookie cutter. All right, so what are some colors that I can throw together here? I want to try to make another piece and then maybe cut out a couple more birds and cut out this butterfly. I don't want to take time now to dig through my um, my die cuts because I've got them in several different places. Let's see. Look, I've got this lovely peach and a nice little mellow yellow. And I think that's probably not roving. Oh, look, and then here's another corally color. What if I blend those? Let's see how they look. They might look, they might, nice, might uh, make a nice butterfly in bed. So let's take some of this loveliness. Let's mix. So how many have felt or have wool and needles that they've never, I know Pam, she has it. Have you tried uh, any of your kids? I think she said she didn't. Has anybody else tried? Or felt it anything? Got any tips or words of wisdom? And then let's put some of this plain. Pam went out and got her mail. Ooh, her keys your package arrived. Ooh, I hope mine will come soon. I know, right, Kathy? Yeah. Yeah, you don't need a little goes a long, long way. I'm going to add some of that in there. Kathy's so close to Keisha, she gets hers like in a nanosecond. Of course, I remember to look for my invoice. It's not there, and then. I forget. 
God bless Keisha. She sends me a little message. I sent your invoice. It's not usually overdue, but I always seem to check on the day before it arrives and then forget to check the next day. You feel like a dope. I feel like a dope. You opened it on camera. You're re-watching the video before. Oh, I, I, I used to do that. I don't do that anymore. You're so good, Pam. You're so good. I love to see what everybody gets. Because I'm there for, you know, a, a lot of the sale. But not all of, the, all of the time. But I can barely remember what I got. Hey, Kim. I love seeing what everybody gets. Oh, I'm liking this. I'm like, you know, maybe a little bit of this red down here. Pupper needs a wee walk. Okay, Shaz. I put a diaper on my pupper. I put her out earlier. And, uh, okay, it's nice here, but it's not really. It's, you know, it's chilly. She's out there laying on the patio. Like she thinks it's a spring day. And then I couldn't get her to go out. So hubby's not home. So I we have issues because she's she's not well and she's still having issues. So I put a little dapper on her. We'll see how that does goes. Okay, let's felt this. I'm liking these colors. If I do say so myself. That one doesn't feel. Sh I mean I just changed that one. I keep grabbing that one. I just changed out those needles. But this goes into this foam. A lot better this one. Now that I know that I can cut through. Oh, wonderful, Pam. That's good to know. He's going to be missing his grandma. His grandma. What will you have him call you? Dying to, I'm just dying to know what my niece is going to have. <sighs> the littlest kid in our family right now is he's one. So we still have little ones. We have a one year old, three year old, and then my grands are four and four and seven, soon to be. Five and eight. Oh my gosh, it's hard to believe. I'm not sure they call me grandma. Makes me feel old. I'm 45. Well, that's a good thing to make you feel old. You know what I mean? There are worse things to make you feel old. I get the feeling old thing, but like when your daughter says her doctor was an old lady, and then you find out her doctor was only two years older than you are, you know. But I understand what you're saying. Of course, we didn't, my husband and I, we didn't get married till we were older. So we got a late start all the way around, all the way around. All right, let's just put some more of these colors down.
I don't know if we're playing Pinochle tonight. My girlfriend. <clears throat> I haven't heard from my girl. Well, sometimes, she, well, most of the times, I think they message. Uh, where did they? Oh, there, oh, the gold. I used the gold. Message my husband. And um, Sundays are hard for her because that's when they can see their one son and his wife they work retail so it's tough you know those retail hours are tough so we were, we were just playing playing it by ear playing it by ear okay let's add that in I'm trying to keep the coloring the same as where i when i started my daughter loves corals Think, oh, that was a mix. So this was just plain coral here. This was a mix between the white and the, the light coral, I think. You think, see, if you needed flesh for like a gnome's nose or something like that, see, if you pull these two colors together, and now I've got a really, I've got a lot of dark in there, but you can see what I'm saying. You can get a nice, you can get a nice fleshy color. See, I would add more light into that, but you can work it. I know that's what you said on your video. By the end of the year, you'll have two more grants. I can't even imagine. Yeah. How old's your youngest, Pam? If I may ask, I know you got quite a range there. I wish I could have more than two grandbabies, but it doesn't look like my daughter's done. And my son's six. Okay, I was I was saying to my husband, I know she's got quite a range, and I thought your youngest was five, so I was I was close. Yeah, I was telling them with your hubby being away, and you got your hands full and fixing that dryer and. Amazing. Okay, 22, 20. Okay, then 13, 10, 8, 6. Oh, they're all nicely spaced. I just got that one gap, huh? Okay. And then how many puppies? Oh my gosh, those puppies are so cute. I, want, I could have me a puppy. That would be so amazing to me. My husband said to me, you can go pick out a puppy. Pick out a puppy. Of course, I'm a bit of a puppy snob. I like certain kinds. <clears throat> I can't imagine spinning this stuff, right? Pulling it and spinning it. Of course, I wouldn't mind trying it. That's one of the problems with me. I want to try all these different things. Only six puppies. Oh, they took a puppy with... And Oh my gosh, how did that work out with flying? I guess you just had to put them in a crate. Oh, how cool.
you know how those reels I, I don't think they call them reels maybe they call them shorts i don't know they come up on youtube you know you can watch a video i was saying i think last week i watch cooking ones i watch the like american not american i was so much and uh agt ones and you know then they keep sending you yeah you had to put in a carrier oh my gosh i was thinking about that if i you know if you went somewhere you know you saw a puppy somewhere and you wanted to go get it how much it would cost i guess they wouldn't let you bring it i would hate putting it in the carrier but you know you gotta do what you gotta do um okay now what was what was i thinking of before i started this oh so you, you get these different videos that there's chaz is back welcome back you get these different videos that come up right that you can watch well this was a duck this duck was at the edge of like a, a lake like a little pond and you could see the big fish like the big koi fish under there and the duck was on um a surface that looked like some kind of feed or it wasn't hay it looked like it was like some kind of you know feed that you would feed chickens or ducks and this duck was grabbing that food with his bill and then leaning over into the water and putting his beak down and dropping it in the water and those fish were, were eating it like crazy. It's like the duck was feeding the feeding. It's not like it was. The duck was feeding the fish. So Pam says, so while you're in the airport, you can carry it or let it walk. But once on the plane, he has to be in the carrier. But you can keep the carrier with you, or do they have to put that in like where the luggage is? That's what makes me nervous. Wasn't it years ago that they would put the put the animals like the kitty cats and dogs in carriers but then put them in with the luggage having the carrier with you that's not bad if you're able to keep it with you nice okay i've got a bit of a separation there No, it had to be small enough to get out. Amazing, Pam. That's amazing to me. Oh, that's cool. Oh, man. Okay, I'm going to try to felt this. Like, I wanted to stay together when I cut my butterfly and then my birds. I think I know where my little bird wing, my bird wing um, die cut is. I still have time. Okay, this is this is um, not felting together there. Let me put another little piece of um, this in here. If I can get this, sorry, I'm really trying to pay attention so I don't stab myself again. Some of this is a little see through, I've got it thicker on the ends. Learning curve with everything, right? This one, um, that my, my, she's not really a friend because I don't see her. I mean, I just used to see her when I worked at the co op, but my acquaintance, real nice gal, um, this is heavy. 
where the wooden ones are light, you know, but you can really feel the weight of this one because of that knob. This one works really good though. I think I want to find that little wing. Now you could add other colors on top, right? You you know that, right? You could add um, if you wanted a contrasting color or a little bit of something, you could just felt it in once you got going. And you could felt all one color and then marble it. even think about the puppy fitting under the seat because they're little you know the, the puppies are little all right okay let's see if i can quickly now i've got to, oh that came out easier than i thought woohoo is this the right one? Is this the right book? May not be the right book. What do I have in here? Oh, they may be stencils. Hold on. Hold on. I saw these um little binders to set before them in the box. And of course they had hydrangeas on them so that attracted me right away <clears throat> and i thought it'd be a good place to store my smaller dies <sighs> but the little pockets were open at the top and the bottom which i didn't realize until after i put my dies in them so then I glued the one end. I tried a glue stick. Oh, that didn't work. So then I ended up stitching. Pam's not keeping any of the puppies. By the time they are all ready for the new home, I've had enough puppy sitting. We've got a lot going on, especially with such a young family. So I'm not sure this is oh, look at that. That's kind of big though. I'm not sure this is the best idea. Well, this might be a fun one. Oh, you got an Angie ball? How'd you get in to get an Angie ball? Sweet. I'm really looking for that little bird wing. That's another cute little flower. Hmm. Let's see. <gasps> there it is. There it is. Whoop, 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 whoop. <gasps> Look at that little wing. Let's just have a little look through while I'm. I think that's it. Okay. I'm not sure I'm going to keep these in here. What else did I put in here? Oh, stamps. Okay, now I make such a big mess. Get some of this out of the way. I think this is felted down enough. I'm getting anxious. I'm getting anxious. Ooh, you don't want this sitting up in the air where you can hit that. Make sure your needles are 
in a good place and not where you can get injured. All right. Got the machine back up here. Now this is a lot thinner. I didn't felt this down as much as I could. But I can always felt them more once I get them cut if I need to. So I'm just putting this on my plate and I'm going to see what all I can get out of it here. I want another bird. Put him there. I want to try this butterfly. Hmm. He's going to be plain, plain. Come on, I'll put him there. And then I want a little wing. Put the wing there. Let's see. Let's get this wing down here. I'm trying to get as much out of this as I can. I could have made my that other bird. Oh, there's a little bird. I forgot about the little bird. I need my other wing. Uh oh, uh oh. Uh -oh. Well, I might have to run it through a second time. I'm not seeing me wing. Let's try it. All right, making the sandwich. Mm. Gonna wind it back through. All right, so we got a whole video to watch. Whoa. -oh. I don't know if that flower cut. I'm gonna put that through again. I should have flipped it over. Here we go. My other little wing. Come out, come out. Wherever you are. Well, it's here somewhere. Might be on the floor. Okay, let's see what we've got. Oh, I love these. Look. It feels like my camera keeps moving. Woo! Hubby's home. Did you hear that sneeze? I keep telling him he should give me a warning. Warning, Will Robinson. Warning, warning. Look. That didn't. That might have been the. That might have been the little bird. Oh nope, here's the little bird. Was that the butterfly? Oh yeah, the butterfly didn't cut. Hmm. There's a little bird. Here, let's do this. With this little wing. <laughs> Thank you, Shaz. 
Thanks, Kathy. I think they're cute too. Look. I think I might have to. Did I have? I guess I had the wing I was looking for. Duh. Yeah, the only one that didn't come out was the butterfly. I might try that again, like down there. But let's just see. What do I have? Um, I think I have. Just make sure that I've got Hmm. I thought I had my little bead box here, but I guess I don't. The girls are saying, bless you. <laughs> I was going to see if I could. I could get my sequins. I was just going to see what a little bead looked like. Let's see. What do I have? Well, maybe in here. No, they're little buttons. Of course, a little button would work too. Oh, that ear feels so nice. These aren't the right color, but here's a couple little. Just so we can get an idea. These aren't the ones I was looking for. I might need to stitch a couple. These are really small seed beads. Can you see that? Uh, yeah, probably wouldn't get my red eye, but it won't come off my won't come off my tweezers. Oh goodness. Come on, little fella. Cooperate. We're on a recording here. You know, he could put a bunch of them in the center. I have bigger ones that I was thinking would look cute on some of these. Or like um, I think Gail was saying earlier, French knots could all go. And you could felt another color in the center like we did with the other little flower. Yeah, that happens. My cleanup day is usually Monday. So I think that's it for me today, ladies. I'm loving my little cutouts. I really am. I'm going to have to make some more of those. So there you have it. Felting for the beginner. A little disappointed that that butterfly didn't chomp out. I'm just not sure why he wouldn't have cut out. You might be see it's real thin. I have a real thin spot there. So maybe that's why. You need to have a certain a thickness, you know. It could have been felted down more too. So that's it for me for today. I plan on streaming tomorrow evening. I hope you can make that. That'll be at 5.30 Eastern. And uh, there's still some gals going. This, I know. Well, the little bird. Yeah, me too. Um, there's still a good part of the day left. So I'm sure there'll be streamers. Mary will be on tonight. But I'm not sure. Oh, Tanya. Tanya should be on. And um, probably. Um, you're welcome, Shaz. Um, Oh, I can see her face. I can see her little face. Xandra. There, it came to me. 
Xander is usually on at four Eastern and Tanya at two. So that, that's in like a half hour, 45 minutes. Yeah, so that's it for me for today. Thank you so much for coming. It was fun. It was fun. Now I've just want to cut out more of these birds. I'm trying to think. I just really, other shapes. I don't know that I have other shapes that are cuter than those stinking birds. Those, those birds look so cute to me. Anywho. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day. Hope to see you on the tube somewhere. And don't forget, take time to be creative and enjoy the journey. I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.